In a previous lesson, we were talking about the three key technologies that are at work and make cloud computing possible. In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and dig into the important one in the middle here, automation. And this is exactly where I get one of my favorite sayings. You want to make sure that you are working smart, not hard. One of the first jobs I ever had was working for my dad uh, on job sites. And he gave me a task one day where he said, Bart, I need you to cut all of these really long two by fours down into these little 10 inch lengths. So there I was, I got out my little tape measure and I started trying to measure all these. I figured what I would do is measure all of them first and then cut them later on. So I went through, measured everything, and then I went through with my saw and cut all the little pieces. And wouldn't you know it, I ended up with a whole bunch of little pieces that were cut pretty close to 10 inches. The problem that I found was that as I went through, I measured a little imperfectly because, hey, I'm a human. And this meant that sometimes when I was going for that one particular mark on there, I might draw the line a little ahead or draw the hind a little bit below. Sometimes I got it right on the mark. And then, of course, when I went to cut it, I had yet another opportunity to potentially miss my mark and add a little bit of variation into it. So in the end, despite all of the effort and focus that I had given the entire process, and believe me, it took me a little while, it took like 45 minutes for me to cut all these blocks, I had introduced a huge amount of variation in the output. And so my dad, upon seeing this work, was like, wah, 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 build a jig. And I was like, oh, yes, a jig. So he helped me build a jig that would measure everything perfectly 10 inches so that I could cut them and measure them all at once. And wouldn't you know it, all of my blocks came out exactly the same length from then on. Automation to the rescue. Now, in my little tale, there were really three different wins. The first one was efficiency. I was able to produce more pieces faster when using the jig. Secondly, it was vastly more accurate. No longer did I have the human error of me accidentally adjusting my measurements. And in the end, that led me to a standardized product. And improving efficiency, accuracy, and standardization is absolutely a huge factor for us in the world of information technology. A more technical example of how we can apply this principle of automation can be found when we look at scripting practices. So imagine that you were an administrator performing some sort of manual administration on a command line. Just like in my little board cutting story from a few moments ago, the more lines and the more actions that I have to enter into the system, the more likely it is that I'm going to make a mistake. And consider as well that I might have to perform this on two or three or ten or a hundred systems out there. And the more times I have to perform those actions, the more likely it is that I'm going to introduce some sort of an error. And so a common practice is to take all of those little operations that you saw me typing in manually and write them into a single file that contains all of those particular steps and instructions. We call that a script. The script now basically represents the jig that I talked about earlier. It encapsulates all of the work that has to be done and improves the efficiency and standardization. It will only ever get executed the way that it is written in this particular script. I can run that script then as many times as I need to across as many systems as I need to, and it should theoretically produce the same results. To round out our look at automation, I'm going to go ahead and put our script onto a system. Most modern systems out there have the ability to run some sort of a timer, whether that be scheduled tasks in a Windows server, or whether that be a cron job that's running on a Linux server. This allows us to set a specific date and a time that we want this script to run. The system will then go along, and when the timer hits the particular time, it'll invoke the script for us. Yay! This means that good old Bart can be at home, sleeping away and I don't have to be there to run the scripts myself. That's a big win. Now this image of Bart sleeping away while work is getting done in the background reminds me of my early days in the help desk world when I was one of the on-call technicians over the weekend. Boo! This meant that if something went wrong, somebody was gonna call me and have to wake me up and I was gonna have to deal with it regardless of what hour of the night it was. And if we walk through the timeline here, the problem started at some particular time. The person that called me realized the problem, I don't know, minutes, hours later. They call me after finding the help desk number, and then I take a few minutes to finally go into the office and take a look at the issue, only to take a little while longer to finally go through and fix the issue and get everybody back online. Now I know how to fix the problem. If I can take and write a script to perform that same action, then it's possible for me to automate the response to this. I can set up a little monitoring service of some sort that is going to look for this particular type of incident. When we see that incident, the monitor will kick off the script and it should resolve that particular problem. 
And guess what? The monitor is able to resolve it within a matter of seconds or minutes. And guess what else? Bart didn't have to get up in the middle of the night. Hooray! In this little story, the big win was responsiveness. And, of course, that added efficiency of allowing Bart to sleep his way through the night and getting the problem resolved just the same. Heck, in a lot of situations, we're able to solve the problem before people even realize that it's an issue. Now, that is some powerful service management. We are truly working smart, not hard. So to tie this back to cloud computing, if you're a cloud services provider, you are going to give your users some sort of a menu with options that allow them to choose what sort of things they want you to provision. So when a user comes along and selects product A, in the background, that kicks off some sort of script that will go through and build maybe a virtual machine for the customer, set up monitoring for them as well, and then ultimately provide them back details that says, hey, your VM is ready, and here's the information that you need to use and connect to it. Recognizing that the cloud service provider designed a process that got executed, and it didn't require a manual human action to perform and build this. And in all honesty, the world's cloud service providers out there would never be able to do what they do at the level that they perform it at without powerful automation. In the end, it's this automation that makes it efficient and accurate enough for cloud service providers to let their customers do their own self-administration, a really important principle to cloud computing. Be sure to check out my other cloud computing lessons where we talk about the important role that wide area networking has played in making all of this work together and be accessible across our good old friend, the internet. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.